members of the head table, minister, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, still morning. Um, it is indeed a privilege to be asked to speak with you. I am most um, joyful. I want to also say it's also a privilege for you to be asked to attend um, this summit because it's a great opportunity for you as student athletes. Um, I want to also say well done to Mr. Daniel England and his team for putting this together and to always having Jamaica at the forefront of his mind, even though he's living overseas in the diaspora, as um, the good minister said. Um, I don't know where to start. I didn't prepare a speech and I was approached by Daniel to speak with you. I said yes without, without um, understanding what I will be doing with you. But I decided to just speak from the heart and to tell you my story and hopefully that my story will resonate with you. And I hope to be very short. I know you just had a 15 minute break, but I will not um, abuse you by having you listening to me all morning. <laughs> all right, um, so I'm Wavell Hines. I was born in Kingston. I grew up in Portmore, St. Catherine, Portsmouth. Not your, not your constituency minister, sorry. But I went to school in your constituency minister. I went to Rehoboth Basic School on 1 Augusta Drive. And I went to Independence City All Age, which is now Independence City Primary at 10 Tampa Avenue. And I matriculated by passing common entrance. You guys would have done PEP or GSAT. I did common entrance. So that doesn't mean I'm older than you. So, um, and I passed a Camperdown High School, which is situated at 6B Camperdown Road, Kingston 16, Franklin Town. And that is my story. I started playing cricket, which I'm known for, from a tender age of probably three years where my father was the captain of the Portsmouth community team. And I started to learn the craft there. And, I in, and interestingly, I started out as a groundsman. So going for the different stuff for my dad when they prepared the pitch, clean up the field, picking up the bottles, the whitewashing the stones, the boundaries, just going a bit, a bit of a gopher for everyone. And I fell in love with the game. I played football as well. So I played football at Camperdown, Pepsi, which is under 14, under 16 Colts, Manning Cup. And I played under 14 cricket, under 16 Colts and Sunlight and captain all the teams on both sides. So I grew up playing sports, but I had good, um, my parents had good foundation and they always believed in education. So while I was at school doing sports, Every time my father would check on me at school, and my father never goes to report day or parents day, never. He goes to school every two weeks while I'm in class investigating me with other teachers. I don't know these things. So when I don't know my math homework, he will ask me when I get home, why I didn't do your math homework that day? I said, no, man, I did it. Because I don't think that he will know that I didn't do it. N not knowing that he would have visited school and checked on me and would have gotten the report from the teacher that I didn't do my homework. So that is the sort of diligence that my parents had and, and, and the interest they had in school because they themselves went to school and had to stop at grade nine. And they made a pledge to themselves and as a parent, a group, a union, that their children will get the best education possible because they weren't privileged to it. They both, my mother and father's parents, my, my maternal and paternal grandmothers are school teachers. So education was always a foundation, but back in the days when you have a big family, you can't afford to send everybody through school. So some will have to go and some will have to stop. So the long and short of it is that I was forced to pay attention to schoolwork. Not that I necessarily like it because I more enjoy playing and enjoy myself at 12 years old. I went to Camperdown High School in 1988 when Gilbert blew. The two weeks, then Gilbert a week, and then Gilbert came. We had a break for a long time, and like an, an, a second summer. So we're happy. And then we had to go back to school after the water and everything was restored and things came back to a little bit of normalcy. And um, that is when I realized that I was in for a treat of something different and new because this high school life is coming to you. It required more discipline, required more commitment and dedication, but I was still playing football and cricket and that was good. I fast forward through high school, played, represented Jamaica under 19, three years. But one day I realized the value of education. I was asked while I was at a Jamaica under 19 trial game at the University of the West Indies that I needed to go to the Pegasus the same day to collect an award. So I said, award? What time is a cricket game? I said, no, man, you have to go. And this award was an award by the, from the former prime minister, the late um, Michael Manley, 
who was a lover of cricket and so was other leaders of the country. They were all lovers of cricket. And he gave an award for the student at lead, the cricketer who performed well on the, on the play field and in the classroom. So he did two in corporate area, that's for Sunlight Cup, and two in rural Jamaica for persons who play Heavy Cup. And I got seventy-five thousand dollars. Not knowing that, not knowing that that award was available, but because I was consistently performing on the field and in the classroom, thanks to my parents, that was that. The second year I won the same award, seventy-five thousand again, and the third year I won the same award. So it's 1994, 1995, 1996, and in the final year it was increased by hundred percent. So it's now one hundred and fifty thousand. So over a three-year period I won. 300,000. I'm sure if I if we give a student at least 300,000 now, you'll take it, wouldn't you? And and that <laughs> and that is some that is some 31 years ago. So you can imagine how it is. I then used that money to send myself, my other siblings who was two other two other brothers who were attending Campbell High School as me and my sister went to Waterford High School and I used that to put them through school as well. I then did CXCs, did A levels, didn't have Cape at that time. Again, don't think that I'm old, please. We had A levels out of England, accounts, I did accounts and economics and ethics and our general paper. And I matriculated to UTEC and I used the same money to pay my school fee. At the time, UTEC school fee was $32,000 for the entire school year. Is that the same now? <laughs> so we know where we're coming from. So. I did that and I also used the money to buy cricket equipment. And while I was at UTEC, I got a phone call. I got a, while I was at UTEC at school, I got a phone call that I was selected for the West Indies A team. So not the West Indies senior team, the second level team. So remember now, when I was at high school doing the Jamaica trial match, I was at cricket and I was told that I went on an award because of school and cricket. Now I'm at school and heard that I've been selected for cricket. So I'm just trying to give you the balance in making sure that you look after both. Minister spoke about being devoted. Minister spoke about being committed and um, getting your rest and everything. So there's a, there must be a balance that you create. So I said, okay, I took a year. I take a took leave of absence after finishing. I was in, I was in commerce doing, doing um, business administration. I think it has now changed. I think that the, the faculty is now business ad, and they are teaching other things. And I did a year. I took leave of absence. Went to play. And that leaf of absence continues for <laughs> continues for about 15 years. Yes, because I was now ensuing and pursuing my career in cricket. I then, in 1997, I went to South Africa. And by 1998, I went to India, same second 11. And in 1999, I got my first call up for the West Indies senior team. Captain was Brian Lara. You had Carl Hoopers, you had the, the Courtney Walsh, and you had Kirtley Ambrose, the Shidner and Shanda Paul, the Jimmy Adams, those, the Ridley Jacobs. Those are the persons that I went in the dressing room. First game call up um, Antigua Recreation Ground in, in Antigua. We were playing Australia that test match, and I was called up. I didn't get any game, obviously, but I was, I was living a dream. I was floating. I was, was the gopher. So I, I, my father trained me to be the gopher in preparing the grounds and everything before I played. So I'm doing another apprenticeship at an international level, going for the water, doing the thing, because it's all a part of the game. And, and, that, and those sort of preparation and training is what um, Mr. England have asked me to speak to you about life after sports. But you need to make sure that you prepare first and have a foundation and a BSA you could launch yourself. So I went, I did the 12-man duties, um, and that was that for the one game. Then I went off to England to play club cricket from April till about September. And I was in England for six months playing club cricket. I got 4,000 pounds to play cricket for six months. England, up somewhere in a, a town called Holdham, up in Manchester on the top of a hill, cold as, I don't know what to tell you. Coming from Portmore where it is hell hot and going to Holdham where it is blinding cold. I drank tea every day, all day. Went out on a Tuesday night and I'm going back to what the minister said. So I had my schedule worked out. I'd, Tuesday nights was the night when they had a university night, so the drinks were cheaper on that night. So we go going to town that night. Um, I had my physical day that I would do at the club because I'm not managing myself. Because I'm in England as a professional playing for a club, and they give me somewhere to live, which is a stone thrown from the cricket ground. So I have to manage 
when do I do my physical, when do I do my bowling, when do I do my batting, the days that I take rest, the days that I'll go and visit friends, according to the schedule that they would have given me. There's a fixture, so you know what is happening and what time the game starts. And in England, when you play cricket, it's a 48 over um, tournament, and it, the professional who comes to play is expected to bowl half of those overs. So, you know, you bowl one over at this end and one at the other. So, every week, every game, not every week, I will play sometimes Saturday and Sunday. Every game, I have to bowl 24 overs before the game even starts. That is allotted to me, and the rest is shared up with the other guys because I'm the only paid professional on the team. So, I would have used that to, to play, and I went through owning my skills, training, playing, performing, meeting other people, going to play. Um, benefit games to other West Indians who are spread, again, the diaspora, spread across the, 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 the England, getting on the Greyhound, four hours down to, to, to London, getting on the train, and just living and exploring and learning and, and growing. And it was all happening. And then one day I was at Autom, getting closer to the end of the season, September, and um, I was reading something. In, in, in those days in England, they had something called Teletext. So it's B BBC, ITV, and there was Teletext that gives you all the news you need. In a text that just runs, scrolls, and it runs up the screen. And I was reading the Teletext, and the security came up. And then I saw my name. And I said, hey, what's my name? I do find Teletext. So, my, so I have to wait another probably five minutes for it, for it to be repeated. And when I read, I said, Waverlands got called up for the West Indies team to go to Sing Singapore in September. And um, and Waver Lines to report to Cricket West Indies. So I don't know the number yet. <laughs> so when I eventually get up to the club and get a phone call from the club to call back home and call the West Indies, they said I should meet them in, in London, Excelsior Hotel, Airport Hotel, um, within 24 hours. So it's important to be on TikTok, but it's also important to watch the news because your opportunity may be coming by and you may not be there to take it. I hadn't I, I didn't have been watching the TV and would have seen the teletext. Maybe they would have said, I oh, can't find Waver, let's find an able replacement. So it's always important to be on the pulse of things. So it's good, TikTok, Facebook, all the different things, the social life and thing, but stay current. Stay in the know. Current affairs is always important. And and that is and that is what I do. Now that training came from my father, who used to give me a few um Beatings with something called a fan belt. Who knew a fan belt? Yeah, that's what I got. I got I got beaten like twice a year. So I'm just straightening and every time I put out the fan belt on the table, you just straighten up because when the when you get one out of the fan belt, it's like ten seconds after you realize you get it. Then it comes to you. Yeah, it, 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 it's serious or a serious thing. It's so keen, it's serious. So every evening, I used to have to watch the news, 7 o'clock. Every, Tony Patel, I can't tell everybody would come from the GBC. News and TV, sign up 12 o'clock with the national anthem. Then he saw, you see the school challenge, squeeze the sharp man, sit down, sir. Um, right Forrester, read the weather. The same, Ali McNabb, who know Ali McNabb? I think he's participating in government now. He used to read the news, Linda Della Pena. I can tell you the works. Failing and Leon Forbes, I can tell you all of them. But 7 o'clock every day, I, we didn't have any cell phones and any TikTok or anything. So mainstream media was really where we had to go to, to stay current. And and I will tell you the connection between me mentioning watching news at seven o'clock and my future um <laughs> um my future happenings. So by watching the news in England because of my training, maybe by force initially, but then I became um, in love with, with, with knowing what's going on. I was able to log on to my opportunity. Got called for the West Indies team, went in, played from September 1999 up until 2010. That was my career, and that was the, one of the reasons why the leave of absence was about 15 years. And then I played my last season for Jamaica at the regional level in 2000. 11 and i was rooming with a friend called andrew richardson kingston college old boy i don't know if you know him we call him trash he's now the coach for the jamaica cricket team and he is a coach at the university of the west indies and um he told me he was asking me if i'm going to play another season so i said no man i'm going to leave and i'm finishing 
When you say, but it is your best season ever, you have told me that it is your best season ever. I've researched it and it is the best season ever for Jamaica over the 16 year period you have played. Why would you not play another season? So I said, well, you must always know when to go. And if you're going to remember me, you're going to remember that I left when I was at my best. But beyond that, and that, that may have seemed a little selfish, but beyond that, I knew that for that season, I was not enjoying warm ups. So every time I have to wake up in the morning and go to breakfast and the bus leaves at 7 30, I just want to come up my bed and go on the field. I don't want to go and warm up and stretch and lecture in the team meetings. I mean, I want that. I just want to get up and play and go home. So I realized that not going to, I'm not going to get my way because the, the, the principles and the, the functions of the game doesn't allow for that. If you're going to play a fet match or a festival match, it's fine. Student athletes again, we know, we go, we know about warming up, don't? We're preparing ourselves to go and do the big event because that prepares us to get to our best, but most importantly, it prevents injuries. So I knew that it is time for me to go because this culture that I am no longer enjoying, I was one of the persons who would have built that culture as a team. Now we need to warm up, we need to train properly, we need to be devoted. At the end of me leaving in 2011, Jamaica had won four years consecutively. They went on to win five under Tamar Lambert, who was the captain. And that is um, history throughout the Caribbean. This is the, Jamaica is the only country to have won five consecutive titles regionally. And I think Tamar Lambert was given the national honor and all those things. So the, the legacy that we have built because of discipline and culture is important. And I said to him, well, I think cricket is important to me. I think cricket has been a great part of my life. But I see myself beyond being a cricketer. I don't think my parents sent me to school to become a cricketer. They sent me to school and cricket was an extracurricular activity that I, I chose and it afforded me a professional career in the first half of my life. And I want to believe that I will see this, the three scores and 10 or even more. So I have the greater part of my life that I, at that time I was 34 to go. So I said that I'm going to go back to school and you should do the same. And I was speaking to also David Bernard June at the time we were on the team and telling the same. Him say yes. So I retired at 2011, April, and by 2011, September, I was enrolled at the University of the West Indies at Carrimack. So now that brings you back to the, watching the news at seven o'clock. Now I'm at the, the, the institution that deals with media, and that's where I was registered. And I went through three years, started out as a part-time student because I was feeling my way back. The first day I went to class, a teacher is Dr. Canute James, and he was giving the history of journalism. And we were to, he dictated and we took notes. And like about 10 minutes into the notes, my fingers froze. Because the only writing I've done for the last 15 years was to sign my autograph. I maybe put a note below it, but all the best, good luck, get well soon, or sign up a, 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 well, a card, a birthday card, or a get well card. But I have never written a paragraph, never mind a, a whole textbook of notes. So my fingers froze and I had to stop and sort of allow it to get back to itself and then ask somebody to share their notes with me so I could um, record my own notes thereafter. So that is, that is the, the, the essence of transitioning now. I'm in a class now as a mature student with about 70 other students with the age, the average age of about 19 and they were 19 vibrant but a complaining bunch so they're from all over the country <laughs> all over the caribbean parents did all they could to get them there to make them as comfortable as they can give them all the resources and they're complaining i don't like sir why is he doing this and i don't like this man and i had to say to them come here you came here to to they came here to 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 advance the favorability of a teacher uh, I, you came here to advance your academic um, potential. What the teachers have is what you're trying to get, and they are certified. I said one of my teachers was Dr. Kanuji, and so he has his PhD in what he's doing. You all just have a couple of C-sec and a couple of Cape, and that is your dime of a dozen. Everybody in Jamaica has those now. And even if you get to the degree level, so you're trying to get to the degree level, which is the country is populated with people who are well degreed and diploma and all the rest of it. So that sort of brings some better understanding to it. 
because every morning, Dr. Kanu James, every morning morning will have a, a, a pop quiz and it's on current affairs. So if you didn't cover the media all week, all weekend, and I'm sure they were on TikTok and they're all partying and at student union, living it up and everything. So that quiz I used to win every, every day I used to win. And there was a prize for phone credit and that's what attracted them because they wanted credit for their phones. Um, but they, don't, they didn't understand how I'm always winning. So I said, well, I don't train for it. I just, it's, it's a lifestyle. I watch the news every day. I follow the news. I go and watch late news if I'm into 7 o'clock news. Check the CVM news. I listen to radio in the morning on my way to school and trying to find out what is happening. And I got the, get on the internet, BBC, CNN, for World News, Al Jazeera, just, just about everything that should create that balance and give you a better overview and understanding of what is happening. So I did three years there at UTEC, at, not UTEC, sorry, at UE, at Caramac, matriculated um, with um, honors in, in journalism, media and communication, that's the degree, BA, Bachelor of Art. And then I um, went back to work, as I didn't say. I am also the president and CEO of the West Indies Players Association. So I've been an executive member from 2002, treasurer for four years, then I went to vice president for four years and became the president on the 1st of April, 2012. So in all of what I'm telling you I'm doing with cricket and doing, I'm also being the union rep for the players across the Caribbean. I am on, I went become the CEO in 2014. So while I'm at UTEC, UA, I am doing all of this and I'm also a parent. So I had to drop my sons to school, then go to school myself. Then I'm also working at Sportsmax on their show, the zone, Sportsmax zone, you know Sportsmax zone? Yeah, when they first came out, I launched with myself, Alexis Nunes, who now works for ESPN and a guy named Joel from Trinidad. We were the first persons to, to host that show. And I did that for two years. So drop my, my sons to school, take myself to school, leave school early, went to Sportsmark to work, leave Sportsmark at six, went back to UA to do my evening class. And then the cycle continues for three years. I am also the president of the Kensington Cricket Club, which is situated in Rallington Town. Um, so that's where I learned my craft. After leaving Port Moore, I played for Kensington from 1990 to date. I'm still the president today. I'm still playing when they are short or um, persons are overseas for different reasons. I have to fill in and play against young people who are faster, fitter, swifter than I am. So I have to also do that. So I'm managing all these things, but I believe that my preparation came from what my father and my mother taught me. And my pre pre preparation came from what I learned at Campadon High School in managing being a footballer, being a cricketer, and also um, excelling in the classroom. I then went to work and I got bored and I said, I need to go back to school. And I decided to do my master's at UA again, UA Open Campus. And I went to do my master's in um, management studies with a specialization in um, human resource management because I was a union rep representing players. I understand the labor laws and I understand all the different um, trade union stuff we needed to do, but I am negotiating with the employer. So in order for me to have a better understanding of both sides, I went to study to learn about human resource management so that when I sit on this side asking for what I want, I can tell from before the, the opponents or the opposite um, people speak what they're coming from and what they're coming and what is true, what is not true, what can be acceptable or not. And, and that gives me a broader perspective. But to prepare yourself as a student at least requires you to be disciplined. It requires you to have an understanding of, of what you want. Um, for instance, don't think about a pension when you're 55 and nearing retirement. Your pension must be thought out but from the, you are thinking to apply for a job. Um, the long and short of it is you save more than you spend, set your goals, save more than you spend, and have the discipline to keep reinvesting what you would have saved in different areas. You need to have a broad portfolio. You need to make sure that you don't limit yourself that boy, I am a high jumper, so I'm going to focus on high jump. That is fine. But if it is that you can go and do some long jump, then you can practice that. You see him both used to be a 400 runner and in his early part of his career, wasn't he? 
no, no, I don't know even if he thought about it, nor any of us, or any Jamaican, that maybe after running in the world youth championship, that's the one he won at the stadium, national stadium, that that he would have matriculated to be the fastest man in the world, 9.58 today. And that, that 400 gave him the background and the, the strength and everything that he needed to, to start to accelerate faster than any human being can ever think of in a organized um, race over 100 meters. Think of yourself the same. Think of yourself that when your teachers and your, and your, and your parents or your guardian or your aunt or whomever it may be, your coaches who are probably persons who are closest to you and know a little bit more to you than your probably parents do because you spend a lot of time with them. From school start in the morning, the coach may be at school to when it's time to go get home. You may not spend that time with any, any, anyone else in your circle. Just think about preparing yourself school. Don't limit yourself in your education. Don't limit yourself in coming to seminars. Don't limit yourself in going on, on the internet and researching and listening to speeches and listening to, uh, to persons who would have been there, done that. Don't limit yourself to going to parties alone. Have a broad open mind about what you want to be. Understand that it takes commitment. Understand that it takes dedication. Understand that it takes sacrifice. So if you're going to be a top-notch athlete, you will have to have your own birthday and do have a party and accept happy birthday on the phone. But you need to go to your bed now because tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock is training. Accept that you'll miss mommy birthday, daddy birthday, weddings, even funerals, unfortunately. So you'll find a different way to say your last respects. But you can't do it alone. One of the things I've learned early and I've practiced it still, that I need a community around me. And we get the sense of community when we're growing up about the persons who live in the same space as you. But a community around you is your support unit that you can't do without. And you need that every time. Nobody who have excelled in life can do it on their own. You need a community around you. You need good people who are going to help you to make good decisions, who are going to support you when you are not at your best, who are going to um, protect you from the outside forces when they, they come at you, because you will have that as well when you're in the media. Um, and people are writing and saying and, and creating narratives that are negative towards you. You need persons around you to protect you that you don't have to go out there to defend yourself, but you have persons um, navigating and mitigating all of those circumstances. You, you need that community around you, and you need to ensure that you understand the importance of that. I went to school in Campbell in 1988, and that is the heyday of that gentleman there, Mr. Daniel England. Though in those days, champs were... Boys' champs is this weekend, girls' champs is next weekend. So they weren't held together. And that goodly gentleman was a superstar. And I say that in, 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 no, in no uncertain shape or form, Daniel England was champs. You have Daniel England, I think Donovan Paul came after um, from St. Diego High School. And I think Rudolph Mikey from JC. Yes, so Daniel England was the man. Champs was about Daniel England. He was the, 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 the franchise kid for Champs, the flagship for Champs. And he would have made his mark and, and, and made his name. And he would have done what he did, went overseas, and he's back. And this is year number one. How long have you been having this now? This is four years, but twice. All right, right. So. This somebody who has a heart for Jamaica would have understood what track and field meant to him, his school, his community, and he's here giving back. And you could be the next Daniel England. Um, you could be the person who is putting on the next summit globally with the Jamaican flag plastered in the background because that's who we are. But I understand the essence of giving back. I told you about being president um, for Kensington Cricket Club, not because I want to be the president, but because when I look back on the things that Kensington would have done for me and how they treated me, um, I am probably one of two players, current former players who are still there playing and participating. Others would have made their mark and would have moved on with other things in their life. I just believe that clubs and schools and church and, and churches and those things are there to help to mold and bring the society together. They are great social engineering tools and, it, and they, are, they have their purposes. So I want to, 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 to encourage you to 
pay attention at school, do your schoolwork, explore yourself. If you can take mathematics from Ford Farm, do it. Do not limit yourself. Listen to your coaches, have a community around you, and the sky is the limit. Um, your personal achievement and what you will get in terms of the monetary returns, it's unlimited. Sports is a multi-billion dollar industry right now. And it's only getting better with the advent of the internet and the media. Um, television, um, the television aspect of it brings in the greater portion of the funding. And chances is a, is a global event while you are amateur student at Leeds. And you are just preparing at that level to go to the next thing. Netball is the same. Um, basketball, football, cricket, whatever you may play at, at school. But you, you have an advantage. Students, student athletes have an advantage over a regular straight student because you get an opportunity to be, to be um, practical at what you would have learned in the classroom. You get an opportunity to train and be fit so that you can function for a greater part of 24 hours than the regular person who is unfit. And that's a fact. And you, you, you need to use that to your advantage. So life after sports begins while you're at school preparing because that's when you lay your foundation. You lay your foundation so you could um, launch yourself out into the world with no limits on you. I am very proud of my school, Campolon High School, and I am very proud of who I have become as a student athlete. And I have one duty, and that duty only is to ensure that wherever there is another Wave Alliance or another Daniel England or another Minister Terrellang, that we can uncover them, put some support around them, and launch them because we're about nation building. So this is a great summit, thanks to the, the, the diaspora, Daniel England and his team. And it is great of all the students to be here. Congrats to the teachers and the schools who saw it fit to send their, their students here. And I want to encourage all the students not to, just to make it a pastime down to the conference center, but to ensure that you would have um, noted your takeaways and go and analyze them. And if you can get contact with the persons who have presented so you can have follow-up conversations, that will be great because nation building is important to us and you are a critical part, you are future leaders. We have to make sure that we tool you with the right information and resources so that you can go and take your rightful space in Jamaica. As Minister Terrellang said, he applied, he was rejected, wasn't even offered an interview. Now, the minister in the, in the sector, and that's great news. And so you can be the next minister, you could be the next prime minister, the next chief justice, you could be anything you want to be. You have an advantage, you're a student athlete, and I allow that to work for you. Thank you very much for listening. Sorry to be long, but the pleasure is mine. I was using the Ravel. Ravel. I took notes, did you? I have a lot of nuggets here. Uh, this time I want to call on Merle Grove to share your takeaways. Merle Grove. Merle Grove, where are you at? St. Andrew, you're next. I told the pick on you, but I know you're ready. Thousand dollar credits. Going once. I'm in St. Andrew. What's your takeaway? You shared some great nuggets. Use, do me a favor, if you don't mind, press the button, use the mic. Okay, so what I learned was being consistent in sports can allow you to support your family. As he said that he got an award just for being consistent in training. And sports can take you places. Yeah. That's what that's the lens. You know, it's so awesome. Thank you. Here it is. That was also my takeaway. I wrote um, generation, generational wealth gap start with closing the education gap. Sports is the gateway, oftentimes, to closing that wealth gap. It's a great takeaway. That was mine as well. Um, Sports will take you places. Other, sports will take you places others can only dream of. 
Krishana, I'm going to give that to you. It resonates with me, and it reson I hope it resonates with the room. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, the, which is why I'd ask the question to many of our student athletes at the start, um, where they would have traveled to. Um, because, like I said to them, you know, a lot are on social media. We see everybody making bucket lists, right? And some of the places that they, they want to go, I mean, even the girlies on social media, I mean, not so much as the men, only me. Anyhow, um, the girlies will put up, you know, maybe where they want to visit next and stuff. Um, you know, some of, even some of our Jamaican social media influencers. And a lot of our student athletes, I mean, we maybe don't get to explore it when we go, but we have been there. Um, a well-paid trip by the administrators and, and so on. When you look at our reggae girls or reggae boys and, you know, where they travel to, to, to participate and represent Jamaica with such honor, it's, it's, it's what sports does. And I just want them to always keep that in mind. It will take you places many can only dream of. And that's all it can be for many. A dream they will never maybe get to visit. Uh, maybe some of us can save up some money and go to Japan. Um, but again, you know, um, for some, they can only make it to another Caribbean island, but not all the way to Japan or Costa Rica or wherever it is. So like I said, I want them to always keep that in mind, that we're a big deal, we're not small fries and side order. Some people can only dream to do what we do wow. and go to the places where we have been. Thank you. Thank you. We also heard Mr. Hines spoke about like, a cheat code. It was first mentioned earlier. Use social media wisely. Stay current on issues that are relevant. Keyword there is relevant. All right, I call on Sent to Use to share your takeaway. Did you guys go home? You're here? Is that you right there? Go ahead. I know you have takeaways. Share, share with us. Would you stop? <laughs> well, this take um this nugget has already been said, but being consistent is really important because many start out and not many can finish it. So in the long run, slow and steady wins the race. So it doesn't matter how fast your progress is, but it matters what shows your results can prove and define you rather than what you've shown because you can be the person who doesn't get a medal, but in a couple of years, you can be the one that stands at the podium. So I think that's really important to athletes, and not only athletes, but to others too, who have a dream and would like to work towards it. Thank you. Have a you have me to add this for you? Also, um, Mr. Hines shared, um, be humble. Every job you do has a purpose to it, and it's important to do it well. He started with a groundsman, and he took pride in his role as the groundsman. Because no matter what role you play on a team, you have a purpose. Embrace your purpose and maximize it. Thank you for sharing that as a takeaway as well. I have two more. Um, Dr. Ter uh, Minister Terry Long also shared, as an, well, always an ambassador. To me, that means you're always on stage. Wherever you go, there you are. He shared, do not limit yourselves. I want to add to that. Do not limit yourself. Also, don't let others limit your potential. Let us sink in. I share I should that same statement with my kids. I'm not going to tell them they can't do something because I don't want them to limit themselves. 